Hi everyone. Uh, this is what we're going to be making today. It's obviously a necklace um, with some beautiful topaz here. These drops are absolutely gorgeous. The quality is amazing. So I'm going to show you the different components, starting off with the drop here, which could also be made into earrings. So we've got the earrings here. And you can make a smaller pair if you're not into the great big dangly ones, like this. So if I just move this out of the way and we can get started on the bottom section. So what you need to do is take one of your pieces of topaz, one of the topaz drops, and thread it onto some 0.4 wire, which comes in the kit. You've got loads and loads of it, which is brilliant. Um, so that's probably about, here we go with my measuring, um, six inches, something like that. And what we're going to do is take the drop down towards the end. So we're coming in about two, um, two inches from the left hand side there and bend both of those wires up. So your drop is then in a little loop at the bottom. So just with your fingers or pliers if you want to, carefully manipulate both those wires in so that they come together at the top of the point there. And then the hematite, I've got a fabulous drill hole and both of those pieces of wire will go through that drill hole and then just bring that down so that you've then got that um, sitting and holding both of those wires together. So now if you bring those and open them up what we're going to do is thread on some of the seed beads, some of the hematite and some of your sodalite. So if, if you take the, um, the soda light and when you bring it off the, the strand, just make sure that you pinch it and hold it tight so they don't rotate and move. So the pattern is one of your seed beads, one of your soda light, seed bead, not that one. <laughs> so delight. So bead. And then so delight. Finishing off with a seed bead. So that is that side completed. So now we're just going to do the same on this side. So seed bead, oops, pinch three so tonight off the strand. Just be aware that your other side is obviously not connected up to anything and you could quite easily lose them all if you're not aware of where it's sitting. So, I mean, here I've got them pinched between fingers and lost the hole. It's there somewhere. There we go. Pop that on and then your seed bead to finish and then on the longest side if you pop one of the hematite there and then with the shorter side you can feed that also through that drill hole there so when you pop those in just make sure everything's sitting nice and evenly along the wires 
because that way you'll get a nice even shape once you manipulate the wires into that curve. Grab your chain nose pliers and just twist. So grip in on top of the gemstone and just twist until you've got a nice even twist there. Don't over twist and over tighten because you could quite easily break those wires. And then what we're going to do is take round nose pliers and just make a nice rat loop on the top there. So bring the wires round twice. Link that back and then trim off the excess. Now obviously the teeny tiny bit I can't use it again anyway because that is way too small. But that larger piece there can be used um, for rosary linking, which is what we're going to do next. So if I pop that down there for a second, and what we're going to do is take some of the hematite, some of the sodalite, and just rosary link. So starting off with the Hematite. Start to form your loop and then pop on that drop section there and finish off the loop. That round twice, making sure it's nice and neat, and then just trim off. The excess wire and that should be nice and neat there so just make sure that you haven't got any pieces of wire still prominent and sticking out from that that wrap and then pop on your hematite and finish off that little connector by doing a second wrapped loop. Just bring that round a couple of times and trim it off. So repeat that process with the um, sodalite and then what you'll get is a connector like that. Um, so we'll just pop one more sodalite, uh, one more hematite even at the top just to complete that. Obviously, if you want to do a different pattern, do a different pattern. It doesn't, you know, there's no right or wrong. It's your piece of jewellery that you're making. So pop that on. Make the loop. There, nice and neat. Trim that away. That feels cool. And just pop that on there, and that's now finished. So, what I did was then make um, two more drops or lengths of rosary linking. But instead of having the section here, um, it was just that part and then going into the rosary linking. So slightly different, but still very effective. And again, would make fab earrings if, if you didn't want anything quite as um, intricate as that. So once you've got your um, section made, all you need to do is pinch those two centre sotolites on either side and give it a little tug and you end up with that loop there which is um, then open up and it's the wire is strong enough to hold it doesn't sort of bend or move or anything once that's made so once you've got that um, you can move on to the, the wire donut so to do that if I pop that to one side and then 
what you need is your 0.4 wire so just take your wire and what I did was I used um, a fingers just to wrap the wire around so four fingers there and just wrap and I used quite a lot because I wanted it to be a really strong structure so keep going for a little bit that's coming up to about half the reel and then um, try and keep it so that the strands of wire are all running in the same direction. You've not got crisscrosses. Um, you've you've got it quite parallel in terms of the lengths of wire, because that way, what you'll get is a nice um, pattern forming. So I'll trim that off there. Put that to one side for a second. So now we've got this, I'm just going to pull out the tails on either end because we can use those. Okay, And then what I did was open it up so it's a bit more round, but you can already see here how you've got nice um, lines coming round. So try and keep that, so support either end with your thumb and your finger and then twist like that so vaguely in the center <laughs> doesn't have to be perfectly in the center because obviously that wouldn't be a piece of my jewelry that'd be somebody who measures stuff <laughs> fold that over like that and you've got then a lovely um almost uh like a um infinity loop but turned in on itself almost so that's really nice I like that way you've got the the wires that twist around and follow that pattern and then with these two tails that we've kept what we're gonna do is follow that around here but then poke the wire through both of those layers so you might need to give it a bit of a wiggle to get it through but you want it to disappear into these lines you don't want to be able to see that particularly and all we're doing with that is holding those two layers together so it's a really simple thing to do um, just take your time make sure that everything's sitting nice and evenly and you're not distorting the, the shape, the lines, the patterns that you've just put in there. Flip it over if you need to and work on that side. So just carry on and stitch through. Now, if you make a decision on which is the back and which is the front, you don't need to worry then if this side isn't quite as neat as the front. Um, because you'll get little areas like that where we've gone across the line because I want to move across so that I can then tack a different area together. So just focus on keeping the front really neat. Poke that through there. So once you've got that tacked basically in position so it's not completely fixed, what you need to do is um, bend it so just use your thumb and your, your finger and just manipulate those wires so if you press and ease them you'll start to get a slightly domed shape which makes it look a lot more um, generous I suppose in terms of the, the amount of wire you've got there so now what we're going to do is take some more of the gorgeous topaz drops and as you can see on this piece, I've started stitching them in, in sections around the, the um, metal donut, the wire donut. So 
all you do wherever you've got sort of an overlap or a ridge you can then just use that as a guide to pop your topaz into so all you do is bring that wire back through if it wants to go if it doesn't want to go take it out and try again so we're going to get that feeding through and I can see it it's come through there so what we're going to do now is get one of the, the topaz so you may need to just smooth that wire out on the end to get your topaz drop on if it doesn't go because you've buckled the wire up and everything um, <laughs> then uh, just trim the end of the wire off and and you'll be fine because you can always add in with this it's it's um, one of those designs where you don't need to make sure you've got enough wire to start with because you can add in so just to bring that here make sure that the the point of the gemstone is actually buried in those loops there and then bring the wires round and so as you're doing this what you're also doing is reinforcing those layers and stitching together those two layers that we created so bring that round and then up through that next layer so I can then start to stitch in around the top and also the other thing that I did was thread loads of the um, little seed beads onto the 0.4 wire um, so that creates almost like um, a thicker wire because the colours match so nicely with the wire that we've got it's um, it's lovely that you can then use that and it looks just like a, a detail, like you've done some magical wire weaving or something and created this texture. Right, that's not going to go through, is it? Because I've folded up the ends. So what we want to do with this is just draw around the... Um, the shape, the donut, and layer up, add additional textures and lines into this. So, if I just bring that round, it defines that movement of the wire there. So I'm going to bend that down just so that it's running in the opposite direction and almost forms a hook here. Um, just so I don't end up pulling it all out. So I'm coming between those two topaz there, round to the back, and then what I did was I took the loose wires here, well not loose because they're attached, but the wires here, and you can just carefully feed through into those seed beads. feed that through and that will then hold that seed bead strand in place so all you need to do is just manipulate them so that they, they um, hold Hang on, I want that over the other side don't misbehave that's better right so that is then held in place because this wire is fixed onto the donut wires and my seed beads are now captured so it won't go anywhere so that anchors it at that point and then I can bring my wire over the top so here I don't like the way that wire there I get very obsessed by individual wires now um, I don't like the way that wire is sitting 
So I'm going to bring this over the top and it disguises that line that I'm not happy with. And then again, just bring one of these wires through to here. So if you don't want to actually feed through your seed beads, what you can do is come across the seed bead wire, the carrying wire there, and feed back through. So you're then just capturing that individual wire rather than the seed beads. Whichever method you want to do is fine because they both work. Okay, so just keep going until you've got as many of your seed beads on as you want. Um, like that. And then once you have got your seed beads in place, let's say I've got enough on there now, trim off that wire and then you just anchor this wire in. So we're going to push that through to the back. There. And then I'm just going to work that into that donut of, of wires. And that will then fix in position and not go anywhere. We won't lose any of the seed beads. So on top of that, what I did to add even more movement and texture in there and embellishment was the, the wires that we've been using to fix and everything, join stuff together. If you take some more of your seed beads, ooh, traveling, and just thread a few onto your wire, <laughs> that's like um, borrowers tiddlywinks isn't it Ti teeny tiny tiddlywinks right <laughs> pop a topaz on and then a couple more seed beads and you can then just wrap round so it's another way to join on with um, topaz and just build up your layers there and work those wires in. So the final piece of this would then be to take the, um, the drops that we made, the rosary linked sections and attach those and then also create um, the bail section in effect so if I bring that in all we need to do now is pop these sections on and create this to hang it onto either a chain or a gemstone necklace so if I say I'm going to use this wire here for the the bail section and I'm going to use the wire here at the bottom, so just move that round, bring that down in a line to the bottom section here and I'm just going to feed it through so it's in position to be able to attach the dangly tassely section. So all you need to do is thread through the end link on there and then push that back into the donut and do that for each length of, um, of rosary linked chain that you want. Sometimes it doesn't want to behave and go through but what you can do if you straighten it out is if you just take pin and then push through it just creates enough of a gap for your wire to go through 
Maybe that. So make sure it's nice and close to the actual donut swirl. And then carry on, do your, your additional two drops there. And then at the top, all you're going to do is repeat what you did um, with the, there's the other wire that I'm going to use. Repeat what you did for the drop at the bottom there. So take your hematite, pop that on there. So remember to put both the wires through and push that down and then you open it up and just carry on making the, um, the triangular section at the top and the loop and then once you've you've got that all I did was use beading thread to thread through um, creating the pattern with those those seed beads in between each of the gemstones popped on the pendant drop because obviously that's a wrapped loop so it's very secure um, and then carried on beading around and then on this one I've, I've used the hematite drops as well, um, hematite uh, gemstones as well and just attached it to chain to make it long enough to go around the neckline. So that then is how to make that donut tassel drop. So you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller for earrings maybe, you could use this um, as the centre of a bracelet and work off either side. So it's got lots of different um, possibilities, using it in a, a, um, a big neckline piece with chain coming between and connecting multiples of this up would be quite cool. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you enjoy your kit when you get it home. <laughs>